Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. We're here. We're back at it again, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. With that being said, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Organic herbs and botanicals, skin care and edibles, wellness for body and mind. The Brothers Apothecary. Fine teas and remedies. Ronald Records. From indie gems to classic hits, discover the heart of local music. With live shows all the time, up close and personal, and regular releases on their in house label. Ronald Records. Supporting the community, one track at a time. All right, thank you all so much for watching again. Shout out the Brothers Apothecary, Ronald Records, and Portland Water. Thanks for keeping us hydrated. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. Hey, uh, I'm James, uh, singer and guitarist from Drinking Bleach. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about you know who you are, where you're from, what you do. Give us that like Tinder profile of your involvement with music. Sure. Um, so I started playing music when I was about 15. Mm -hmm. uh, I initially started on bass. Oh, okay. Hey, um, me too. Yeah, 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 it's a good instrument. It's fun. I don't get to play it as much anymore, but yeah, same. Yeah, I have one. Um, I'm trying to find just like a band to join where I don't have to uh, necessarily be the front a, person. Yeah, have yeah. all the primary songwriting. You know, just for fun. But I gotcha. Anyway, that's how I started. I took bass lessons for four years or so, or three years maybe. Okay. Um, and then. I started picking up guitar. Mm -hmm. Like the bass lessons ended, I kind of like graduated high school and gotcha. Um, and you were like, I want to be in front of things now. Yeah, I want to. It's like you can write songs on bass. Don't get me wrong, but like yeah. you know, like a whole song is like more. A guitar is more tuned for yeah. that, I guess. Not everybody can be Cliff Burton, right? Yeah. Or Les Claypool or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I taught myself to play guitar and sing, no formal training on those uh, things. Um, and uh, I did it with uh, mostly Nirvana songs mm -hmm. and Neutral Milk Hotel songs. Okay. Um, some, some classics. Yeah. that's a, And those are baked into the cake as far as I'm concerned. Like mm -hmm. pretty much with like anything I've been making the last like 17, 18 years since I've been okay. started. Um, not necessarily like, oh, I'm going to write like Nirvana songs. Yeah. Just like some some kind of element of that is going to be like, just like baked into my style. Yeah, pretty you know much everything I mean? you do kind of has that. Yeah, that flair to it a yeah. little bit. Yeah, I feel that. I, uh, I, I'm i mainly like a funk and like groove rock bass player. Yeah. And I just, I don't think I could do anything else at this point. Every single song mm -hmm. I've ever made has that t t turn bleh, built into it as well. Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. just like, and I just accepted it. And like, I like, I think they're great artists, both of them. So it's like, yeah, I mean, if you've got to have inspiration from somewhere, that's a good place to have yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Was, like anybody in your household musical at all? Uh, my mother was, I'm an only child, so I didn't have any siblings like learning guitar or something before me or anything. But my mom actually was in a band in college. It was like a, I don't I want to say like, some kind of like folk or like Irish folk or something. She okay. played the mandolin. Oh, gotcha. And they they did like traditional songs and stuff like that. So like that was, but she became a scientist. So like ah. music is more of just like kind of a a side hobby. Yeah, you know, something um, to decompress from all the scientists. Yeah, yeah, which was opposite of me. I was like not scientific and 
No, I, I wanted to do art and music and stuff. So you know what I mean? So I gotcha. Yeah. Um, and then before we officially get into more of what you do in the present day, mm-hmm. I do have a couple foundation questions I yeah. like to check in with everybody on. Sure. And this first one is one we ask early. It's one we ask often. And it's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? With my own money? Um, I think it was less than Jake. Hello, Rockview. Do you know that? Band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, classic Less Than Jake album. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I got really into like ska punk and like pop punk. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> it was either that or like probably um, maybe American Idiot. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. It's like hard. It was all kind of yeah. That was a, there together. That, you know, definitely that window of time where they were all pretty popular. Yeah. Um, and then what was the first live show you ever went to that was like specifically one you wanted to go to? So like you okay. saw it was happening, got tickets and went to it. Uh, I think it was Goldfinger. Okay. Yeah. I was like, again, I was into like the ska, like yeah. ska punk, pop punk. Um, and I wanted to see Less Than Jake, but Goldfinger came around first. And then like very soon after I saw Less Than Jake. Okay. I was like very into those things at the time. Not as much my thing anymore, but like yeah. I, I have like a, a nostalgic appreciation for them for sure. Very much so. Yeah. Um, and then before we officially get into you in the present day, mm-hmm. do you have a defining moment where you decided you wanted to take music more seriously? Uh, I don't know about like a specific thing that happened, mm-hmm. but um, I definitely was probably like. 15 or 16 like right when I started um I think I like I had well I guess really what got me into music and like got me like wanting to pursue it was like I had two friends and we like made a little high school band okay never did anything with it like didn't really write songs or anything but like it was so fun and just like I could just like throw myself into it. Yeah. And I was like in that moment. Yeah. And I was like, I kind of want to do this forever. Like, yeah. To whatever level I can get to, or like, I don't know if I necessarily had a goal as far as like, Oh, I'm going to like make it. Yeah. Or, you just you know, wanted but, to, always wanted to be doing it. Yeah. I wanted to be right. And then like, I started writing songs and like, I fell in love with like lyric writing and like okay. melodies and stuff. So I really, um, once that came in, that was just like a cathartic outlet. Yeah. And the rest is history, really, as far as that goes. Hell yeah. that's that, I mean, that's definitely definitely a solid moment. Yeah. Um, but now let's go ahead and let's get on into you in the present day. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get uh, an easy one out of the way first. Yeah. And we'll, we'll mainly focus on, on the current band. Mm-hmm. How'd you pick the name? <laughs> uh, it was at a time... So... I guess like this is kind of relevant in a way because like we'll, we can get more into this as well, but like it started as a solo project. Mm-hmm. I had another like main band okay. uh, in Georgia where I was living during college. And um, I think I just like thought it was like ironically funny. And there's like the me like the drink bleach meme, mm-hmm. you know, and like, I like low key really love memes. Like I think that's well, just I like, you're gonna say I low key really love bleach. Oh I was yeah, like, oh, I no. love drinking bleach. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. But like for whatever reason, I thought it was like kind of funny and shocking. And like, of course, my mom was like, I hate it. Yeah. Well, that's how you know you're doing it right. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take that, mom. <laughs> She's gonna watch this later. Oh, gotcha. Well, shout out, mom. <laughs> yeah, hey, mom. Um, so. And then I don't, I cannot for the life of me remember why I stylized it. I put the period instead mm-hmm. of a space. I did notice that. Yeah. And I, like, I wish I knew it. Cause like, uh, maybe I'll like, I like, I just don't have a cool story for it. I think I just thought it looked cool one day or something. And just like, it just became that. And now it's like, there's no going back. It's like on Spotify and everything. Right. You, know you can just I mean? tell people it's a, it's a computer command. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. just type in drinking dot bleep. <laughs> yeah, Ugh. exactly. I just, yeah, I would, that would be the best website actually. Yeah. Cause you can change the dot. 
to anything. That's a good idea. If yeah. Your website. I'm yeah. So your website should just be drinking bleach. That's such a good idea. Oh Ooh. my god. All right. Yeah. I call five percent royalties. Yeah. When, 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 when we make it big, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get you that. <laughs> no, but I, I do that, and also I, I always do this bit where I like break down names a little bit, mm. and it's it's cool because it's two slightly bigger words. They're not like mm. you know, it's not like the something, mm. uh, but they're not hard words. They're very easy to remember. It's very like pleasing to the ears. Like even though it's kind of an edgy concept yeah the the name itself actually feels very comfortable very inviting and then the dot kind of like a uh, uh, off dot brand does that or off mm. so shout mm. out brand uh they do literally it's off dot brand okay and then the second f and the b are capitalized so right like, like, okay there's like this kind of design and aesthetics in there somewhere but like it's a very comfortable name it's very easy to remember mm. and it's just you know People are going to know it's you. You know what yeah. I mean? You're, well, that's a, it's like unique for yeah, sure. Yeah. You know? That's cool. And now that it's here, it's like, well, exactly. I'm rock with it. You know what I mean? And then I guess, how did it come to be? Like, how did how did you start it as the solo project? And then how did it eventually become the band? Yeah. So that's a little more a long story, but I'll try to keep it uh, oh, it's your episode. reasonable. It's you know? you yeah. <laughs> um, so I was in this other band called Generation Pill. Mm-hmm. And I was also like the primary songwriter uh, for that, but I was more of like a garagey, grungy, little bit of punky mm-hmm. type of thing. And I started writing these songs that were just like, because like I write everything on acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. and I'm like just imagining the distortion later, and I figure it out. But I think that's how Zach Wild does it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get the basic chords and stuff, you know, and then you can kind of go from there. But um, I was just writing these songs that, like, weren't going to translate into, like, the grungy punk aesthetic. And we had a couple songs on some of those old records of my old band. Like, that fi- the ending songs were, like, acoustic, like, you know, classic, just, like, yeah. quieter acoustic. But but these were felt more, like, just not the vibe also, just, like, the tone of the songs and stuff, you know? Um, and so I was like, you know, I kind of wanted to like try to do something weird, like a weird side project. So, um, I just decided that I was going to like incorporate like acoustic instrumentation Mm -hmm. and weird electronic, like hip hop influence. Yeah. Like, so like the first, especially the first, uh set of recordings is called got you Mm -hmm. um that one is like super lo-fi and there's like a lot of like beats on it and stuff is like the backing tracks Mm -hmm. um and i just like went to town with it and it just became a thing like i I just started working i just like messing around with it one day and it became a whole album okay um and then put it out and kept making more recordings as time passed. Um, And then there was a big shift later on. We can get to that, like, with the current project now. But I made, I think, three, one, like, full-length album Mm -hmm. called Fist Fight with God, and then another EP called Russian Space Dog. Yeah. And those are all, like, of that style. Um a little less lo-fi as time went on too. Mm-hmm. Like my recording setup kind of changed and um probably got more comfortable with the process. Yeah, and I switched over from GarageBand to Pro Tools. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that that'll make a di- like don't get me yeah. wrong, GarageBand is great. Mm-hmm. But like once you move over to like a like a dedicated full-size DAW, it definitely goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it kind of changed things a little bit. But I will one other note about Got You real quick and then we can uh get to another question is mm-hmm. that for whatever reason i decided i was like you know what i'm gonna record all the acoustic guitar on my phone oh. what i did was like run the metronome with headphones on mm-hmm. press record on the phone play the song and then pop it into the garage band and like it synced up because hmm. yeah. i was like i want to go like super low fi like yeah just make it sound like weird and lo-fi and like i kind of like I don't know what it is about the iPhone voice memo because, like, I'll write, I'll like do notes like mm-hmm. when I'm writing songs. I just like like the quality of it for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Apple's put a bunch of money into those microphones. Mm-hmm. So. They get they have a surprisingly good like low end. Yeah, I'll very say. much so. Oh yeah, well that's 
Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It's actually yeah, a, cool just piece a, of it's information. a weird little quirk about that specific set of recordings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Um, and then I guess, uh, when did the band happen? Like, when did you okay. go from solo to not solo? Yeah, you know? so that happened uh, about a year and a half ago. Like, I would say, like, uh early 2023 i don't know. i don't know what the exact math on that is yeah. but was that so was that like right after fist fight with god yeah well fist fight with god was like in production and i was kind of like i'm not gonna scrap it like yeah. I've, I've been working on this thing like slowly for two years like it would be such a waste to just not okay just put it out but um the whole thing with the band was i was just like Basically, okay, so <laughs> the, I promise this is relevant, but I had another band when I moved to Portland. I ended up dissolving Generation Pill that was my band in Georgia. Oh, gotcha. Started another band here called Idiot Vehicle. And like, oh, good name. Still, yeah, I was still kind of tooling around with Drinking Bleach as like just like a solo thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, then COVID happened. Mm. My ex was the drummer. Oh, we no. broke up during COVID. Oh, and I was no. just like, you know what? Like, Bands aren't playing right now anyway. Like, yeah. Um, I'm just going to dissolve this and like focus on like the solo thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So, like, because that's what it always was. And I was like, well, it's yeah. like the opportunity. Yeah. Great time you know? to be taking on a solo project mm -hmm. full time. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, I was focusing on that. And then, like, shows came back. And I was like, well, maybe my initial thought which is not at all what we have now is like to get a full band, like turn the songs into like heavier, like electric guitar hmm. songs. That was like my inclination. But like in the meantime, I was just playing solo sets. Mm -hmm. uh, I played like a couple at Kelly's um, Olympian. I don't know if you've been there. It's like downtown, yeah. but um, then my, my friend Ross who like, Coincident, I've known him for a long time. He went to the same school as me in Georgia. We both went for audio production. Oh, cool. To Savannah College of Art and Design. Mm -hmm. uh, he happened to end up out here. Oh, hey, Came to my world. show. Yeah, and we weren't, we weren't as close as we are now, like, ever. Yeah. And he, but he came to my show. We were always friends. And he was like, I'll play bass for you. And then, so I was like, okay, cool. I got a bassist. Mm -hmm. Which still, like not really knowing how it was going to form as a band. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so we got together, and I just brought my acoustic guitar, honestly, because, like, there's still a tube out on my amp, and mm. I was like, I will deal with it later. But, like, yeah. never did. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, like, two years, because, like, this band is fully acoustic. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, we started jamming, and he had an upright bass. Mm-hmm. And that sounded really cool. Yeah. And we were just, we were continued to jam. Like we didn't play any shows or anything. And he's like, and like, I give him like as much credit as far as like the current inception of the band. Mm -hmm. He was like, you know what we need? We need like some Tom Waits stuff. Like hmm. one, like hitting a trash can lid with a chain or mm -hmm. something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Something that's percussive. Yeah. But... Just like, like crazy percussion, yeah. like not drums, mm -hmm. you know? So I was like open to it. Yeah. That was my contribution was being open to it and not being like, no, this Just is my yes. band. Like, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I said yes. And he, <laughs> he basically put out, he runs a, a modular synth company out of his garage. Oh, cool. Moffin Zeef. Mm hmm. And I guess he did it on the Moffin Zeef Instagram. He's like, we want a non musician to just like hit, hit, hit some trash. Yeah. You know? And his friend Pepper, uh, said she would do it. She had no percussion experience. Oh, hell yeah. And uh, she had some other musical experience, but like no percussion whatsoever. So, yeah. like, we were kind of like, well, we'll just see how it goes, you know? Um, and then became the process of refining what she was going to actually play. Yeah. And it went through like a couple different variations. Like, at one point, there was like, a plastic bucket was the kick drum. Hmm. Um, and like, but now it's like a, like it's a crate with like a kick pedal. Okay. Um, and then she's got a piece of sheet metal with like loose screws in it. So it mm -hmm. kind of sounds like a snare. Yeah. 
and then like a pe- another piece of metal with a little chain to just like t- 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 you know yeah um and there became the setup and then like we just kept practicing and like she like kind of blows my mind because she's only been doing it like less than two years and like that's on the recordings yeah um and it sounds great at least to me like it sounds like exactly what it what we wanted it to you know and like she keeps time real well and like has a personality with it and stuff and it just kind of like really impressed me um to like not have any percussion experience and then like do that that quickly yeah. You know, because like I'm terrible with <laughs> with percussion. <laughs> like, I get on a drum kit, I can barely like keep a quarter beat or like I can't do fills to save my life. You know what I mean? So it's like when someone like kind of like just teaches themselves something yeah, like just that, just figures that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and that actually that segues well into uh, the next bit. So yeah. let's let's talk about some of your music a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so I went on, you know, I hopped on Ye Olde Spotify and I checked mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've got music going all the way back to 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, but I focused a little more on the two more current albums. Yeah. So uh, first of all, Fist Fight With God is a great name. Big, big fan. Thank you, thank you. And it was very, it was very moody. It was very thick. It was definitely a little on the darker side, but mm-hmm. there were also a lot of like melodic and progressive moments within mm-hmm. it. Like, uh, like in that, the build part halfway through 5150. Mm-hmm. That part was like mm-hmm. really like structured and like interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was also a lot of like verbal cut scenes, which I thought was really interesting. I think, mm-hmm. the, I think the, I wouldn't call them skits per se, but just those cutaways really kind of yeah. created this tone. And mm-hmm. so it was cool to me to know that that was like mostly, I, I imagine mostly you on the mm-hmm. recordings. Mm-hmm. So that is a really interesting project. But thank you. But then moving over to your more recent album, Arrive mm-hmm. Alive, which uh, also another fun name, which mm-hmm. just, like just, or I guess not album EP. I apologize. Yeah. But that like just came out a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it was like three weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you definitely, you picked up the pace a little bit on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was catchier isn't the word I want to use per se. Mm-hmm. But it had this more like able to sing along with. It had this like mm-hmm. carry on pace. And the thing that stood out to me about that EP was the percussion. There you go. Because it's it's so it's it's big. It's explosive. It's it's dynamic. Mm-hmm. But it's not forward. It's not like like mm-hmm. when you mic up a drum set. It's designed to project. That's right. like that's what it does. Yeah. And those sounds had such a an interesting presence. Mm-hmm. And the rest of the EP really breathe in a way that is just I, I'm not as familiar with. It, it felt yeah. very it felt very unique. It felt very different because everything felt so full and like mm-hmm. big sounding. Mm-hmm. But to have that space in there, I think really gave it a really cool listening experience. Mm, yeah. Well, I appreciate that feedback. That's really cool to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll just say real quick, and then I'll get back to Arrive Alive. Uh, I produced, I did all the production on Fist Fight with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no uh, real drums, mm-hmm. so like which I think, in personal opinion, it suffers a little bit from like a little monotony there. But um, I do. I am proud of that album. Uh, but yeah, I did all the production, all the performances, all of it. So, um, but this one, yeah, the, the, it's a big departure with the band with Arrive Alive. Yeah. Um, and we did the whole thing live. So like, oh, cool. Ross, uh, Ross is like a virtuoso at several things in my opinion, mm-hmm. not only bass, but like also audio production. So Cause we he went we yeah he went to the same school, same school. Yeah. um and we just he got mics play we had a room mic mm-hmm. I think we had a kick mic a bass mic and a guitar mic and he was like I think like the I'm getting a really good like bleed from the percussion into the bass mic and yeah. it sounds like he kind of like said it just so yeah so that it like sits in the mix like Mm -hmm. not overpowering but it's just like there the whole time in a really cool way and the bass like pops you know Mm -hmm. um and yeah we just ran i think the most we did on any song was like five takes oh wow so we did it all in one day yeah 
Um, and we made like basically the, and then I did all the vocals in one day. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we did like again like well what I mean is like we did all of that in one day, and then we basically just mixed it the next day, and that's like hell yeah the most smooth quickest like painless thing i've ever recorded you know what i mean you know it, i think there's something to be said when you can track everybody all at once like don't get me wrong the world of like it, tracking individually one at a time and like doing multiple mm-hmm. takes and this and that yes there, there's something to be had in that but when you have everybody playing together it's all bell the buzzer from start to finish. That's the recording. Mm-hmm. There's a different energy and there's a different type of commitment that I think comes from it as well. Mm-hmm. Because once you once you do that, and if you especially if you're not going to go back and punch in anything like that, mm-hmm. you have to stick with that. Yeah. And that, and you know, like you said, there's a little bit of bleed. So like having it be like placed and played, mm-hmm. you can't nudge anything mm-hmm. or else that bleed is going to affect the not moved part. So like, there's really like, there, there's something special to be said in that approach to tracking it. Yeah. I was like really proud of it. I think like in that way, it's like pretty unique. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what other bands do as far as like what's live and what's, well, I think the metronome, like piece by piece. That's yeah. how I've always done it. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, no, that that is more the standard I imagine. Yeah. But, and it's cool because, you know, like I said, now knowing that and having already listened to the EP, Mm-hmm. It's got a really good like listenability element. It's yeah. got a really good momentum in it, and I think that that plays a big part in it. Yeah. But well, if yeah. we if we take a moment and kind of like dig inwards, mm-hmm. how do you go about putting the tracks together? Like, do you write everything and then bring it to the band? Do y'all kind of write together now? How did you, how do you go about formulating? Tracks? Um, I'm pretty much in my room, just like making stuff up. Okay, you know, um, but. With the caveat that, like, it's pretty democratic as far as, like, especially Ross will have ideas. Because, again, yeah. Ross is again, a very talented yeah. musician. Like, on the song Blue Man, for example, I don't know if you recall off the top of your head, but it's, like, the mm-hmm. bluesy one. That was actually the one that was playing in the car when I, uh, oh, when okay. I got here. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Well, you know how it goes, like, da na 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 That was a Ross idea. I was just, like, playing the chord all the way through, and he was like, no, it's a blues song. Like, we got to, (laughs) like, do this little Mm walk-up. And I think it, like, makes the song. Yeah. You know? So, like, again, it's like, I'll write the basic song structure. Um, I do all the lyrics Mm -hmm. and the melodies, but then, like, I'm open. Like, I'm remaining open to, like, any kind of ideas from them. Oh, yeah. As far as, like... Things like that, because like that made that song. Yeah, you know. And there's another song, like on Suicide Song. It's like a couple, like the the way it like stops after each verse. um, That was like a Ross idea too. Hell yeah! So it's like I'm very open to those things. I think it's important to be because like yeah. Well, I mean, what's the point of being in like a band with capable people if you're just not going to listen to their ideas? So that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Like very talented people. And also just like, you don't want to be the kind of person that people don't say, like, no one's telling no. Yeah, exactly. I think like with the the three projects I recorded for this, for Drinking Bleach before this, like, they increasingly suffer. Like, the first one was like really like in, in, like, novel to me. And then I kind of just like got into this rut in a certain way. I can't really exactly explain it unless we like played it right now. No, I gotcha. Um, I just didn't have anyone to say no. Yeah. You know, so you like, just kind of did whatever you wanted. Not even say no, but just like to give suggestions and stuff. Yeah. You know? I was like, I'm just going to do it all on my own. Like did all the album art, you know, like everything pretty mm-hmm. much. Um, oh, I know how that is. Yeah, you you can, you can go. I went to a rat hole for like two years working on that thing, you know. And then this, the new EP is like one day, you know. Like we did it in one day, and it was just like well oiled machine yeah. <laughs> at that, that point. I love that. Yeah. Um. Now I'm curious to know, and let's let's just focus on these last two albums. Yeah. Or I guess album and EP. Mm-hmm. What are some of your favorite tracks? Okay, um, with with Fistway with God, I think, well, Wave of Doubt, that was probably the most popular one as far as, like, feedback I got from people with the, the instrumental one, mm-hmm. and it's got, like, a sample of, uh, of Guy from Fugazi, like, yelling at some guy at the end, yep. <laughs> it's really funny, um, 
That one's really great. I think I kind of nailed that one. Um, 5150 is like my, I think I messed up the mix a little bit, but like that one is very like personal to me, like very personal. And like that one, I think that's like some of the best lyrics I've ever written. Um, and then I think, uh, What's it called? Um, I'm forgetting my own song. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah, dun, 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 dun. Death Cult. That's it. Mm-hmm. I had to remember the the riff before I could remember the name. Um, that one has a really cool riff and like a really cool song structure, in my opinion. And I think that one I also mixed pretty well. The last one on Fist Fight with God, I'll say, is um, the last song, Devil, is a cover mm-hmm. of this... Um, not a, they're not a big band at all. They're like not. They're probably like maybe a little bit above us as far as just like fame or whatever. But uh, they're called Ghostfoot hmm. from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. And uh, I met them like when I was playing in my old band because they toured through. Anyway, they wrote this song "Devil," which was like a secret song at the end of the last track. Mm. And I like emailed them. I was like, "Can I like cover that song? Like it's so cool." Like. Yeah what's it called? And they were like, oh, it's Devil. Because, you know, it's not listed on the track listing. Mm -hmm. And then my friend Maria DeHart did um, backing vocals on the recording. Mm -hmm. It's the only only contribution to the whole album that it wasn't just me. Yeah. And, like, she did so good. Like, And she recorded them all herself and just sent them over to me. And I, like, plugged them in, and I just got blown away by it. So, like, I love that one. I think that's just a beautiful song in general. Um, so those, those are fist fight with God, which is like almost a full length. So like, there's a bunch of others, but, um, with arrive alive, uh, it's difficult. Cause so I think we made got you the single mm-hmm. and it says reprise. Cause like got you was the first EP I ever recorded mm-hmm. and it has that song on it. We reprised it like did like the full band version gotcha. okay so there's another version of it out there um that's a great song i those lyrics are very personal to me as well um they're kind of about like some severe existential dread i was going through at the time but anyway um i lean towards that one being my favorite but at the same time like it's also like I've known that song for so long. That's yeah. like I think people will like it, but um, I get more excited about Blue Man and Suicide Song, which are both like more fast and fun yeah. and like and uh, just like newer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, they pop to me a lot. Oh yeah. Um, and then I also, I mean, I like all of them. Yeah, the, the EP I mean, is the real good. Yeah. I like, and yeah. I think the whole EP is like solid. You know, it's only five songs anyway. So it's like, uh, but the last song is also like, um, just, it's just me playing on that track. Um, and that one I wrote like, I mean, most of my songs have been written in a dark place, but that one was in a recent dark place, and, like, I think I did a good job of capturing the emotion of it. Gotcha. Of, like, what I was feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. And I've had some friends tell me that that song really, like, spoke to them. So I think that uh, Sincerity and Death is that song. Um, So, yeah, like, but again, like... You know, uh, the whole EP is like pretty solid. I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Yeah. All right. Now, before we move into the next portion, this next Mm -hmm. question is probably the densest question in the interview. Sure. But we talked a lot about, you know, your experience with music, the actions, the reactions. But when it's just you and music one on one, Mm -hmm. what does music give back to you? Um, are you talking about like a sense of like my writing music or like playing music? Yeah, just kind of it could be either your process or you're listening just what do you yeah. get back from music i get a lot of like relief like emotional relief mm-hmm. um it's like my primary um honestly i mean i like i go to therapy like i'm actually like uh like i'm sober in recovery um so like i do thank you i do a lot of um a lot of outside like emotional labor, but like, I think 
the way I process with music and like lyric writing and singing and making melodies like really kind of like soothes my soul. Yeah. In a way, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying like that's not the case for everyone, but just for me in particular, like if I like write a song like sincerity and death and like complete it and like process whatever I was going through, I feel like an immense amount of relief. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like you can take it and put it there instead of keeping it in you. Yeah. Like it's like a release. And then like, hopefully I'm not like still going through that or at least I've like gained new perspective. Yeah. You've acknowledged it in more than just existing with it. And like in a way you've been able to create a way for it to kind of exist in front of you. So you can almost see it and process it. Exactly. Yeah. And then like my dream is that, other people can like relate to it and like if they get something from it you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's kind of like the drive to create is like a it helps me process Mm -hmm. stuff i'm going through and then i think like sharing music is like like there's so many artists through the years that have just like really like helped me yeah you know like it, like i just really was moved by a song or whatever and they um i was like ideally like that's why i make music to like help others like oh yeah you know what i mean yeah Does that makes sense no totally well thank you for sharing that. yeah of course but now we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to some hypothetical questions sure. and for these sky's the limits the questions are all made up so the answers are as well sweet um but this first one is pretty straightforward if you could work with any one person. The only requirement is they have to be alive. Okay. Who would you want to work with and how would you want to work with them? Um, who? That is a tough one. There's so, I mean, there's a ton. Yeah, there's so many. Like, it's not like if you pick one, everybody else in existence is off the table. Just right, like right. comes to mind. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, you know, I want to say uh, Tom York. Okay. From Radiohead. Yeah, hell yeah. I love Radiohead. I especially like like uh Kid A. Kid A is like one of my favorite albums by them. Um I want his like I want him to like give me ideas on just like weird off the wall like yeah. song choices. Yeah, like how <laughs> you can how you can take your approaches. Yes, cuz like he like on Kid A especially like they call it the greatest left turn in music history for a reason, you know what I mean? Uh it's just like going from okay computer to that like kind of just like the thought like the songwriting ability and like idea machine that is his brain is just like I would love to work with that. I don't know necessarily in what capacity, but like maybe just like having him suggest. Yeah. Just, just being in the room. Like, yeah. oh, dude, like kind of like Ross does like, Oh, like try that. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah. just like have some wild Radiohead esque, uh, nuances to the songs. Oh, yeah, that would that, be really cool. That would be rad. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then subsequently, and we're going to kind of, we're going to spin this for the way I would usually ask bands this question, mm-hmm. but who are some local acts that you haven't gotten to perform with yet, but you'd like to share a bill with? Oh, okay. Um, you know, uh, well, one is a good buddy of mine. It's probably going to happen sooner than later is uh, Simple Shapes. Oh, hell yeah. You know them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, my buddy P is the singer and guitar player in that band. We've known each other for years. We've worked we work together now and we worked together before. But um so stay tuned. Maybe that'll be a bill someday soon. Oh. But they're they're amazing. Yeah. Um and then I was just listening to and I don't I was sleeping on this band for whatever reason, but counterfeit Kubrick. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're like I was like I thought it was like more of like a heavy rock band or something. And I was like, I don't know, like I don't think they would go well with it, but I listen to the music. It's like very acoustic. E. I used you know? to. Uh, I used to work with a guy that's in that band. Really? And it's, I'm I'm just blanking on his name. I'm so sorry, but you are amazing, <laughs> and I love you. Yeah, yeah, they're they're amazing though. I was, like, I was listening to the whole album on the way here, just because I like it. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, they are. So super lo- yeah, I would love to share a bill with them, and I guess I'll just uh, I'll name one more. Um, who? Probably, I probably want to play with Kenzie Peach. Do you know Kenzie Peach? I, I do know the name. I yeah. heard them. She's my friend, and she's just, like, an incredible songwriter, like, so catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
just has like the best stage presence and i would love to like kind of like have that energy on a bill with me you know like she just like she's so funny and engaging and just like like you can't really keep your attention anywhere else yeah. and like that's aspirational to me so like mm -hmm. i would love to kind of like yeah have a bill where we're like trying to like perpetuate that energy oh yeah that'd be yeah right check sure. her out she's really cool yeah like i said the name sounds familiar i just don't think i, I mean there's it's a million people here so it's yeah. hard to get there no their no i know it's like yeah. i i go out of my way to just like try to dig for artists and Same. like i'll bring up locals to other people and they're like oh no like yeah, exactly. there's nothing like not like they didn't did anything wrong it's just like i feel like i kind of have a little rolodex of just like yep. bands i don't even know personally but like yeah. i'm like oh they're here that's so cool yeah, yeah. i mean i've got 259 additional interviews that are all there you go here, yeah, so exactly feel, yeah exactly um, and then for this next one like i said before sky's the limits and it's mm -hmm. pretty literal in this sense but if you could perform anywhere in the world Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have to worry about crowd access or building stability or power. It was mm -hmm. guaranteed the best lineup, guaranteed the best show. And it doesn't have to be a venue. It could be anywhere. Where would you want to perform? Anywhere. Um, wow. That's a... <laughs> I know. I know. It's... <laughs> I'm like thinking of so many things where I'm like, is that epic enough? You know? Hey, I mean, it, you know, again, it's not like if you pick one place, you can't pick other places after. That's true. Um... You know, I'm just gonna, this would be fun. Uh, I would love to play. Is it which one in Italy? Is it Venice with like all the oh, with the boats? The boats, yeah, the like, the gondolas. Ban on a boat and just like be going down and just like having just people playing. watch. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, that'd be Cause, rad. Because we're like a fully like acoustic band, so yeah. You don't like, need any that off. Yeah. yeah, we don't use amplification most of the time. So oh, like, yeah, yeah, it would be really cool. That would be rad. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, and then to wrap up the hypothetical questions, yep. if you could get one more album from anybody, they could be alive, they could be dead, they mm -hmm. could not put out an album in a hundred years, they could have put out an album yesterday. Mm -hmm. Who would you want an album from? You know, this is probably like a common answer and not super, um, whatever. I'm just going to say it. I think I would like to have seen whether he only lived a little longer and died or kept living or whatever. Just like what the next Nirvana album would have sounded like. Oh, yeah. I'm just like infinitely curious about that. No, totally. You know what I mean? Because they got that one song, uh, You Know You're Right. Mm-hmm. Um, just like so, just such a dark, like powerful song. I'm yeah. just like, where are they gonna go? Like, you know? And who knows? They could have been garbage, but I mean, <laughs> I, I think that that they're they were such a defining yeah element. You know what I mean? Like they really they brought a lot to the table. They changed a lot of things for mm -hmm. people. They like inspired yeah the whole generation of musicians exactly. And like to just know what would have become of that sound, regardless of mm -hmm. where it got to. Yeah. Because like any of the biggest anythings always kind of hit that hit that point. Yeah. But like to see what it would have become. Yeah. Like especially like in the now times, like mm -hmm. where it would have ended up, like mm -hmm. forever infinitely curious like exactly. what would have come from it. Because it would have it would have continued for a long time. Like yeah. it's not like they would have dropped off right then. Like it, it would have Yeah, it would have been in utero and like they're like, eh. Yeah. Like, you know, like at least in this theory for sure. Like Yeah. 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 I mean, yes, yeah, hypothetically. Yeah. Um but I think yeah, I just don't know. Like it I guess it would have been also interesting, like would he turn his life around? Yeah, exactly. Know. Or just get even darker and like more fucked up. Like I don't know. But um it's just like, yeah, again, I'm with you, like infinitely curious about that. Very much. <laughs> All right, but that being said, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this yeah, up. Yeah, of course. What can we look forward to between, let's say, now and April? Now and April. Um, potentially another uh, EP. Oh, exciting. I'm writing it. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to put a fun cover. I think we're going to do another reprise. Okay. From the first EP. Mm -hmm. um, so it's probably going to be like six or seven songs, more realistically. But oh, yeah. um, that's going to come... I already got like a concept for it as far as like the cover and stuff. I'm gonna keep that okay. under wraps, but um, 
other than that, like, yeah, we'll just be playing shows. As maybe we usually play like one show a month. Okay. We got one in October, uh, October 26th at the Waypost. Oh, hell yeah. Um, with uh, two really cool, kind of grungy bands, uh, Speckle and the Doormats. Hmm. And then uh, we're having this. Our friend Laura reads some poetry at the beginning, so nice. it's gonna be a cool gig. Oh yeah! And then I don't, we don't have anything on the books, but like, I'm sure you'll find some. Yeah, gigs. Yeah. yeah, that's like the thing. But in the meantime, like, yeah, like probably gonna do another live EP, mm-hmm. like we did, like Arrive Alive, um, but with more experimentation oh, yeah. on the recording aspect of it. So well, definitely looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for this next one, go and look straight at your camera. Tell everybody how they can find you. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. That's like the primary place for communication for us. Um, drinking.bleach underscore band. Um, and then you can find us streaming anywhere, Bandcamp, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, all the distro kid things, and then SoundCloud as well. So, uh, we don't have like an X or a uh tiktok or anything but um yeah hit us up on instagram that's the best place so oh yeah help with the shows and stuff oh yeah and then uh any other plugs any other shout outs anybody else you'd like to put on while you're on here um i think uh i'm just gonna say shout out to all my nosa homies and they'll know who they are <laughs> but there's so many like i can't like i'm blanking on like bands that i'm friends with right yeah, now you're all good but, um you know I love you. <laughs> so uh, thank you to the Portland music scene for just being really rad. Like, I appreciate that. Like, it's so expansive and wonderful and full of talent. So, like, that's oh. what I'll say is just thanks to all of you. Oh, yeah. I can, I can 100% agree with that. Yeah. All right. With that being said, we've got one last question to go. Sure. But before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And one more shout out to the Brothers Apothecary, Ronald Records, and Portland Water. Thanks for keeping us hydrated. And with that being said, the final question. And this is entirely up to your interpretation. But what is an album you feel is more on the obscure side? So it's a deep cut. It's one not a lot of people would know. Mm -hmm. It's one you think everybody should know. I'm going to go with more obscure than I think... I had two in mind. Yeah. But I'm going to go with um, the more obscure one. Uh, and it's hard to pick because this is my favorite band, but Lungfish is my favorite band. They're not, they're currently, def- they're pretty much permanently defunct. But um, I'm going to say The Unanimous Hour by Lungfish. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to pick one album for like everyone to check out, I think that's going to be it. Hell yeah. Um, they're really cool. Uh, I we would be here another hour if we started getting into them, but like, yeah, check that out if you want something that's like really interesting post hardcore. Hell yeah! Well, yeah. thank you for that recommendation. Yeah, of course. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get up on out of here. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, today. thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh yeah. And this has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. James. And we're signing off later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep jamming.